Grace and peace be multiplied to you. <coughs> Happy Sabbath, and God is good uh, all the time. I'd just like to share a wonderful message that is in my spirit uh, on this day. And I want to talk about God who knows the bigger picture. God who sees the bigger picture. God who hears the bigger picture as far as our lives are concerned. Most of the time in our lives, we, we zoom in on ourselves, we zoom in on, on smaller parts of our lives, and sometimes the very life we live, we think that's it, or perhaps what you are going through, what you uh, are feeling, whatever you are uh, enjoying, and perhaps what you're experiencing, and it looks like that is everything. But the truth of the matter is that God is bigger than that, our lives are bigger than that. Your life is bigger than that. And so we want to look at scripture and, and uh, we want to at least fall back to the position of safety and say, God knows the bigger picture, even if gunje, usasa, negatlele gunje. And uh, let us pray together and I'm going to look at some scriptures and we'll talk about it. Father, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, uh, Jesus Christ our Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the words of encouragement. We thank you for uplifting us. We thank you for taking us into the Holy of Holies by the blood, by the way of the cross. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for everything that you do for us. And we thank you that you are the one we can always fall back to, the one we trust, the one we can rely on, God who is faithful, eternally so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's look at God who sees the bigger picture, who hears and understands the bigger picture about our lives. Life as we know it, friends, is a mystery. Um, how we live our lives is a mystery. Even to the moment that we die, it is a mystery. And how we get born is a mystery. When you look at an ant crawling on the floor and you look at the fish in the depths of the ocean, I watched this documentary once where you see in, in, in the Pacific Ocean, the depths of the deep where it's dark and the, the, the pressure of the water is so heavy but there's a creature that lives there and it breathes it's created by God so, so God is everywhere if, if we look at the bigger picture everything else shrinks when compared to how great and how profound how wonderful God is and remember that God has given us the life that we live and he breathed into us we live because he is we live because he wants us to, 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 to live we have life in our veins because he has given us the life. If we look at things that way, we understand that he's in charge. He is holding us. He's in charge. You know, there's a scripture in Psalm 139 verse 16. It says, you saw me before I was born. So even when we are born, God sees everything that you will go through. And right to the day that you go down the grave and the day that you meet him in, in glory someday. He sees all of that. Now, it shouldn't matter what we see. You know, our, co our confession should be based on God's picture of the situation, especially about our lives. It must be based on his view of our, of our lives. And that should be the end of the story. Amen. And I've said that our lives are a mystery. There's so much we don't understand. So maybe some of the scriptures here that I'll read uh, just quickly as we go about this will help us to at least have something to, to, to think about, to reflect on, on this day. Ye in umuntu, what is a, what is a human being? You know, I'm, 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 I'm capable of understanding um, my real value before God, my source, my beginning. And can I really guess what my end looks like? If God is not involved, I have absolutely no way of knowing what is going to happen. And so a room is packed with a lot of people and, and, and maybe there's trouble, maybe they're fighting and, and someone zooms in on the moment and they take it home. They take it to work. They wake up the next day and take a week with it, and it's eating them up because they're zooming in on the moment. Yet, life and God in our lives is so bigger, much bigger than that. If you look at the bigger picture, it will help us. What would we say about our lives if God is in them? Does the presence of God in your life and my life make a difference about how I see things, how I hear things, how I understand things? Um, does it help me to see the, the finished picture of things? Does it help me to see always the end of things because God is positive, eternally positive, and he's a good God? Now, look at these following scriptures. 
In 2 Corinthians 3, 18, the Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, the Lord is. There is freedom. And we who, with unveiled faces, all reflect the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into His image. There's this part that says, With intensifying glory, which comes from the Lord, who is Spirit. Hallelujah. There, there is something that we are becoming. In fact, something that we are, that we are becoming. I ask myself as I read this verse, you know, this is Paul writing. It's so profound. It's so huge. It's so amazing. Do I get this? This is me. This is him. This is any other human who is uh, uh, saved under the blood of Christ. This is your life. This is my life. Some other cross references. If you look at Psalm 84, the Bible says, they go from strength to strength until each appear before God in Zion. We are on a journey, and this is a mysterious journey. It's a journey where we are going towards God, all of us, and as we go, we're getting transformed. You know, God has a picture of us standing before his face. The picture that God has about us is not that picture that we, we create of ourselves in the little pockets of problems that we live through each day. So let's get rid of that anxiety because it will not take us anywhere. John 17, 22. I have given them, this is Christ speaking, I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are. Now we understand that there is great glory in unity, especially if the people of God are united as we walk towards God. In John 17 again, verse 24, <coughs> Christ again says, Father, I want those you, you have given to me to be with me where I am so that they may see the glory you gave me because you loved me before the foundations of the earth. Christ says, all these people that call my name, are called by my name, are coming to me. They are journeying towards me and they are getting transformed as they come towards me. They should, you know, I, I, it's almost like I would wish that I get to understand how he sees us so that we understand that nothing else all around us is fickle. Yeah, we work. We go to school, we study, we, we build homes, we have children and everything, but there's a bigger picture. God eternally wants us to be with him. He wants us to be with Christ. Now, I want to close with these few words. When you pray, my friend, do you see the bigger picture? When you pray for the sick, the bigger picture is they are healed in Christ Jesus' name. When we face the grave and we see umkoti, what is the bigger picture? No, they shall rise again. Hallelujah. The bigger picture is that we are truly loved by God, no matter what is happening to us, no matter who says what. The bigger picture is that we are truly saved. If God was, was going to open our eyes so that we could see what we are saved from, many of us would just faint right there. Romans 8, verse 1. This is about living in the Spirit. Therefore, there is no condemnation, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life gives you, no, life sets you free from the law of sin and death. That's the bigger picture. We have been saved from so much. This is what God is teaching us. <coughs> in Romans 8, 29, the Bible says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, which is Christ, so that he would be the firstborn among the dead. So we are here, but there's a firstborn from among the dead. You know, we have to die once. And then, of course, Ugwashulelo. So, friends, the bigger picture and the bigger scheme of things is that God has a plan for your life, with your life, through your life, and God will see to it that it comes to pass. I close with this before we go to a benediction so that you have so much to, 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 to reflect on on this day. First Corinthians 13, verse 12. Now, we see but a dim reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face now that now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, love. But the greatest of all is love. Love is the bigger picture of things. Hallelujah. Friends, I trust that you've been encouraged. What am I trying to say? Lift your eyes up and look at God. Lift your eyes up and look at salvation. Look at, lift your eyes up and look at the hope of glory that God has given us. Lift your eyes up and look at the plan of God for my life, for your life. And understand that as we live our lives, God is in charge. And there's a bigger picture, far beyond what we see.
Let us pray together. Father, we bless your name. We thank you on this day. In the short time that we've shared your word, open our eyes to look not only at our situations and circumstances and these moments we live in, because somebody is probably going through a hard time. Someone is broken. Someone is wounded, bruised. Someone is having a good time. But Lord, beyond what we see, just as it is with the ant and the creatures that live in the deep of the ocean, you give us all life. But with us, you breathed your breath on us. And you know the bigger picture. It doesn't end here. It ends in glory, in your presence. We thank you, Lord, that in every moment that is beyond us, you lift up the standard and you raise the situation to another level. Help us to transcend into a level of victory, a realm of done things in the spiritual realm because that is a greater world that we seek to understand so deeply because that is where you operate because God is a spirit. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Bless your people. And now I pray that may the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. Um, Rest in God today, and please reflect on these things. Think about the bigger picture every time, not the small or minute or the drop of a picture. God bless you. Until next time.